yes, um, Sean, How Love of Self Became My Redemption. That was written during the height of COVID while I was stuck in Toronto. With absolutely nothing to do and bored out of my mind. Anyway, I was going, one day I was going for all the files on my laptop and I came across this folder that, you know, had all the points I've written going back as far back as 20 years, 20 years, yeah. And these poems were written, um, started, I started writing shortly after my mother died in 2000. And uh, they pre pretty much speaks to my journey, the personal things I was going through at the time and the best way for me to express or to deal with words basically by putting pen to paper and that's how these you know writings or the ramblings of my poetry came about and uh, so during that time you know when it, you, in the writing process basically it would normally take place around 3 a.m in the morning anytime after that um, quite unusual but that's where i got my inspiration so as I was going through each poem, it dawned on me that I could actually share this with the world. I was like, why not? You know, I've overcome all these things, so why not share? Then I was like, oh, it's a bit daunting, you know, because it's like putting everything out there now, you know. Then I was like, you know what, that's the past, it's okay. You know, we all have a journey, a story to tell, and why not share it, you know? So, and that's what I thought, and I was like, you know what, I think I'm ready to write a book. And so, but, you know, the idea and I push myself. My first official poem was written when I was around 14, 15. To be more precise, I was in, I was in full form. My, liter my literature teacher then was Yvonne Weeks. She helped me to groom this composition I had, which was about three pages into a one page poem, okay, of three paragraphs. And you know, it's just amazing because I'm laughing because, you know, back then I used to get so carried away with my writing and I still do. I love writing and uh, I, it's a, it's, it's a way for me to express myself. I find that I express myself a lot better in writing. I, I just like getting carried away. And um, so during that time, you know, we, she helped me grow the, 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 my poem. And there was a national poetry competition that took place at uh, that time for which we entered the poem for. And I came third. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was good. Um, I think the poem was titled Growing Up. It'd be nice to kind of get, get my hands back on that poem. I can't remember where it is, you know, but it'd be nice to have a copy. Yeah, so when I was 16, now I got my I got my first notebook and I used that as a journal, you know, to just write all my thoughts, all my feelings. And uh, and then, you know, that's how it began. I started writing, processing my feelings, whatever it was I was dealing with, it was just written down. And that became a valid outlet for me, you, you know, and um, it was like... Because I didn't really have anyone to talk to who would take me seriously then. It was like, it was the outlet that worked for me. It was like going before God. Growing up without my mother incubated a painful void in me from childhood into adulthood. And even shortly after she died. And then, because this was in 2000 she died. And then six years later, 2006, my grandmother died, and then that just turned my world upside down. It was a challenging process, you know, to come to terms with, to come to terms with it all. But I had to go through it in order to go forth into the light of my divine being and purpose. So that was something I just had to, by the bulletin, get on with you know, as it be life. Not having a mother-daughter relationship or that bond from inception can only be understood in its entirety by those who've actually encountered it. You know, yet the experiences that, um, that you know, we go through may differ in terms of how we handle it. So, and, and again, it also depends on various factors. Nonetheless, as it leaves, it can leave a sense of longingness, abandonment, unexplained void, confusion about true love, detachment, 
and a, a lack in sense of direction. Eyes Awake. I would say Eyes Awake was birth after I wrote Shand, the book Shand, and then also after my articles, the written articles that I also have published. So the videos now is like, it solidifies it all. It gives me a platform to express my literary expressions. So Eyes Awake is basically my literary expressions conveyed in different forms. So there's the book, there are my articles, as well as the videos. My YouTube channel is called the Eyes Awake, Eyes Awake Sunday Series. So you can go onto YouTube, type in Eyes Awake Sunday Series, and you can catch up on all the videos of the Eyes Awake Sunday Series. Self-love has brought me to this place of enlightenment. Even though odious, it was worth it, as I am a better person for it. We can become lifetime prisoners of our own mind, should we let it. To the world, we are nothing special unless we sacrifice our soul. Inevitably, we judge ourselves so harshly, but we ought to learn of our being and speciality. I am aware that I am an expression of the universe, operating through thoughts and emotions, exemplified by temporary human experiences, not caged by worldly thoughts and actions. I am that I am, energy that transfers to create an experience of my interpretation for that of a spiritual purpose and being. Best expressed in the planes of higher consciousness, elevated vibrations, portal of joy and peace, the element of enlightenment attained, an originality we should all retain. Year 2020, the era of awakening, whether you seek it or not, for it you will be faced. So is your choice to live on one plane. You get in life a reflection of who you are. It is productive to help people explore who they are. Teach a man how to fish to maintain sustainable growth for a lifetime dish.